Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are excited to get the ball rolling because we have a lot to cover in one hour. My name is Nicole Mueller. I'm with VDOT Richmond District Planning, and I'm leading this study in coordination with our local municipal partners. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our first public meeting to discuss the development of the Staples Mill Road Small Area Plan. Next slide, please. As you can all see here on the agenda, we have a lot of information to share with you this evening. During the first half of the meeting, you will hear from the Kittleson team, who is doing the heavy lifting on this project, and the second half is reserved for questions and open discussion. Next slide, please. Also with me this evening to answer your questions are Rob Vilak, District Traffic Engineer with VDOT, and the team with Kittleson and Associates, Meredith Sanders. Chris Teasler and Caitlin Milner. Next slide, please. Let me also welcome our stakeholders. I want to thank all of you for being a sounding board and for your input into the development of this plan. I appreciate you all for attending today. Your voice is much needed for identifying community supported transportation solutions for the Staples Mill Road area. Your thoughts are much appreciated. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Meredith. Thank you, Nicole. All right, before we get started, I want to um, let you all know um, that you may ask questions at any time during today's meeting, starting now. If you have a question about um, anything that is presented during the first 30 minutes of the presentation, you can post them in the questions box that's provided in your GoToWebinar window. Caitlin Milner will review those questions received throughout the first 30 minutes and then we'll read them out loud during the question and answer session. We will then respond to those questions and answer any additional questions that come through during the question and answer session. And with that, I'd like to introduce you all to the study area for the Staples Mill Road Small Area Plan. The study area includes Staples Mill Road, of course, between Hungary Road and Dumbarton Road in Henrico County, um, but it also includes about 12 square miles of the county um, and several other key roads immediately surrounding Staples Mill Road. Staples Mill Road and other nearby streets in the network, of course, serve an important local function by connecting people living and working in Henrico County with those living and working within Richmond. Staples Mill Road and a couple of other roads in the study area, including Broad Street, Brook Road, and Parham Road, all fall within the National Highway System and serve as key regional links as well, connecting Henrico County with um, sort of the major interstates surrounding the study area. So I-64, I-95, and I-295. The study is being conducted to inform and support implementation of a transit-oriented development concept um, that has been developed by Henrico County in partnership with the Department of Rail and Public Transportation, DRPT. Um, these two key stakeholders uh, developed a transit-oriented development concept for the Staples Mill Road Amtrak station and immediately surrounding area along Staples Mill Road. And so as you can see on this slide, um, TOD uh, is generally a, a development approach that encourages a mix of residential, commercial, office, and entertainment uses centered around and near a transit station. For TOD to be successful, it needs that mix of land uses, but it also needs um, safe and convenient access uh, for people traveling by all modes. So walking, biking, taking the bus, or driving. And so in addition to the land use recommendations included in the current draft TOD concept, the concept also aims to um, modify or improve um, access to the station, particularly along the Staples Mill Road cross section. And so um, we, VDOT, based on the TOD sort of concept and Henrico County and DRPT's work, VDOT was asked to develop the Staples Mill Road small area plan to understand if and how uh, the Staples Mill Road corridor and surrounding streets should, should evolve to meet the changing need of neighborhood uses and users. Um, the small area plan will evaluate existing automobile transit bicycle and pedestrian conditions. It will assess future travel projections and development patterns. 
and ultimately generate a range of multimodal solutions to address the study goals and objectives. We'll then test the, the usefulness um, and relevance of each of those solutions through community input, um, starting with, of course, uh, tonight's meeting and an asso associated survey. The small area plan has kicked off by evaluating existing traffic, safety, and development. We started the project in fall of 2021, um, and we will be developing refined transportation alternatives uh, and meeting with you all again to solicit your feedback on those alternatives through the end of summer 2022. And so now I'll kick us off with an introduction to some of what we've learned so far about existing conditions within the study area for people traveling by different modes. As I'm presenting this information this evening, please feel free to add notes in the questions box if we've missed anything um, or if you have any questions about our findings so far. So we set out to take a look at conditions for people walking in the study area, and we did that first by walking in the study area. And some of the pictures you can see to the right uh, show conditions along Staples Mill Road um, at various points along the corridor. And our walk shed some light on the fact that compared to um, the greater Richmond region, many fewer people walk to work in Henrico County um, and in the Staples Mill Road study area. Yeah. And, you know, from, again, our experience in the study area and other factors um, that we know about these roads, um, we have some clues as to why fewer people do walk in the study area. So first off, um, the sidewalks that do exist in the study area tend to be located along high-speed roads, so 45 miles per hour or more, um, and they tend to be located pretty close to the curb. So if you're walking along the sidewalk, you're walking right alongside that high-speed traffic. Again, while there are sidewalks throughout the study area, in some locations, uh, these sidewalks present um, accessibility challenges to people who may um, be using a wheelchair or maybe vision impaired. So these include um, things like um, the gravel or substandard sidewalk that you see on the image in the top left, uh, or curb ramps uh, that are missing or just need to be updated. Um, and finally, being able to walk across the street is just as important as being able to walk along a street on a sidewalk. Um, and another key finding is that of the 34 intersections that we reviewed in the study area, just two have marked crosswalks today. Despite these existing conditions, we know that sidewalk improvements are planned um, in the study area, and we want to call some of those out. Um, VDOT itself um, is planning pedestrian improvements at a couple of signals along Staples Mill Road already, um, and is also looking at some signalized intersection improvements for pedestrians and sidewalk connections along Broad Street in the short pump area, um, as well as a stretch between Cox Road and Parham Road. Henrico County is actively working on the Fall Line Trail project located in the um, east side of the study area, which will provide uh, multimodal access, um, sort of a key regional multimodal connector for people uh, walking in Henrico County. Um, county also has sidewalk improvements planned on Hungary Road, and Henrico County is pursuing multimodal safety improvement projects at Dumbarton Road and Dickens Road. Um, which will be similar to um, a road diet that was recently implemented on Church Road in the county. So building off of the experience walking in the study area, um, similarly, fewer people bike um, in Henrico County and the study area compared to the broader Richmond region. Part of that is because there are fewer dedicated bicycle facilities currently located within the study area. There are some connecting to the study area from or Southern Henrico County and Richmond. Um, but again, within the study area, there aren't very many. Um, and because of the physical characteristics of a lot of the major roads in the study area, it's important to have dedicated facilities because otherwise people are going to feel uncomfortable and unwilling to bike on these streets. So specifically, this map on the right um, shows an analysis, the results of an analysis that uh, the Richmond Transportation Planning Organization conducted on um, basically how stressful roads are today for people who would be experiencing that road on a bicycle. And so your red roads and your orange roads are generally high stress, and your green roads and your yellow roads are more low stress. 
those high stress roads sort of achieve that category because they are wide, they have high um, posted speed limits, and they have a lot of vehicles driving on them. Um, so again, because of these physical characteristics um, and, uh, and just, again, the quantity of vehicles using these streets, people on bikes are going to be less likely to bike on those streets um, without some level of separation from motor vehicle traffic. And as you can see again from the map, these red and orange streets are separating these neighborhoods with low stress um, sort of connectivity, the green streets. Um, so somebody may want to bike, but once they get out of their neighborhood, they're stuck. And this is unfortunate because a lot of key community destinations tend to be located on high stress streets in the study area. So again, this map is showing locations um, like schools, uh, shopping districts, and parks. Um, and again, it's hard to access those on bike today unless uh, you feel up to sharing the road um, on some high-speed, high-volume facilities. And again, Henrico County is looking at those multimodal safety improvement projects that I um, referenced previously, um, specifically on Dumbarton Road and Dickens Road, which, um, if implemented, would uh, reduce bicycle level of stress on those facilities. All righty. We also worked with our uh, partner, stakeholder partner, the Greater Richmond Transit Company, GRTC, to understand um, existing conditions for people taking transit in the study area. So this map shows, um, the circles on the map show existing transit stops, and the lines show existing transit routes within the study area. There are nine, um, three on Staples Mill Road, um, five on a section of Route 1 and 1, on Broad Street. Um, and so despite you know, the presence of transit in the study area um, and uh, the prevalence of many stops, um, people who do commute in the study area experience fairly long transit commutes compared to um, comparable commutes on, uh, I guess, via their own car or carpool. So again, we're looking at if you're commuting to work 37 minutes on average um, if you're taking transit in the study area. The two stop stations on Staples Mill Road are the Western Government Center and Glenside Park and Ride. But as you can see, compared to um, Broad Street, the stops on Staples Mill Road have fairly low transit ridership. Part of this is, again, connected back to the previous slides that I shared showing conditions for people walking and biking, because every transit trip has to begin with some sort of a walking or biking trip. And so if the sidewalks are not quite comfortable, again, because they're located along a high-speed road, it's going to be less likely that many people will um, walk to that bus stop to take transit. All right. So in addition to looking at sort of existing conditions and, and trends for people walking, biking, and taking transit, we also looked at safety for all modes in the study area. And so, so the charts to the right um, show crashes by year for five years, um, 2016 through 2020. Um, and as you can see, there's a pretty high number of crashes that have occurred in the study area at its intersections and on its streets, um, sort of plateauing between 2017 and 2019 and decreasing in 2020. And um, I'd like to emphasize that while crashes did decrease in 2020, the proportion of Severe crashes, or excuse me, severe injury crashes and fatalities did increase in 2020. So while there were fewer crashes, more of the crashes that did occur had more serious outcomes for people involved. The bottom chart, chart shows um, reported crashes by crash type and severity um, and highlights the two most common crash types within the study area. These are angle crashes and rear end crashes. And taking again a closer look at these crashes by severity as well as type, we see that three particular crash types were more likely to result in an injury or fatality um, compared to looking at um, crash severity for all crashes combined. These were angle, in which 33% of all crashes resulted in injury or fatality, head on crashes, in which 59% resulted in injury or fatality, and pedestrian crashes, every single one of which resulted in an injury or fatality between 2016 and 2020. 
In addition to looking at those broader crash patterns, we also looked um, at crashes at specific intersections. And so um, basically what we did is at intersections, we looked at the number of crashes that were taking place and the severity of crashes to understand um, which locations had high frequency and severity crashes. Um, something we focused in on intersections because most of the crashes, the vast majority of the crashes, occurred at intersections in the study area over the past five years. Um, as you can see from this map, a couple of corridors pop up where we have uh, more high frequency, high severity crashes. These include Staples Mill Road, Broad Street, East Parham Road, Glenside Drive, Hungary Road, Dumbarton Road, and Route 1. In addition to, again, identifying these sort of problem intersections, we took a look at risk factors or um, physical characteristics uh, that were similar across these intersections with a high frequency and severity of crashes. Some of these risk factors include um, intersections where you have one big street, high speed, high volume street, intersecting with a smaller street, so a street with low speed and low volume, right, where you have this conflicting attributes of intersecting streets. Another risk factor included uh, intersections located near interstate on and off ramps. Um, another, and this is uh, was particularly common for Staples Mill Road and Broad Street, um, was um, intersections where one of the entrances to the intersection was a commercial entrance or a driveway. Um, and then finally, um, and this is key again, looking back at that uh, pedestrian statistic where 100% of pedestrian involved crashes involved in injury or fatality. Um, a key risk factor uh, is at many of these intersections, most of these intersections, there were no marked pedestrian crossings. All right, and then last but certainly not least, we also took a look at um, the existing condition for driving in the study area today. So as um, I alluded to at the beginning of this presentation, we have a lot of uh, roads within the study area that serve sort of a key local and regional functions connecting folks between Henrico County and Richmond and to several major interstates. So um, we have a lot of high volume roadways um, specifically, uh, or particularly Staples Mill Road, Broad Street, and Route 1. Um, and so, um, unsurprisingly, when there's a lot of demand for a road, um, that demand um, can result in congestion or higher delay at specific intersections. And so this map shows, during the evening rush hour, intersections within the study area that experience moderate to high delay during um, the weekday rush hours. Um, so those blue intersections um, are representing intersections with a delay category that we refer to as level of service E. And the way you would maybe experience that today is um, as you're sitting at that intersection, you would be thinking, I should have left earlier. Um, and then your red intersections uh, are representing the delay category referred to as level of service F. Um, and that's a step above um, where drivers are, are uncomfortable um, you know, waiting in queues at those intersections. Um, so unsurprisingly, these high delay intersections are located on those high volume streets. So primarily West Broad Street, Staples Mill Road, Gaskins Road, and Dumbarton Road. All right. In addition to looking at existing conditions for people driving within the study area, we also took a look at something that we call future no-build conditions. So future no-build conditions considers leaving the roadways in their present state, so not making any changes to number of lanes or signal timing, um, just simply leaving them as they are with routine maintenance and then estimating future travel demand and, and calculating sort of how delay would change based on that future travel demand. We estimated future demand um, based on a review of um, sort of forecasted development in the study area um, on other recent VDOT studies that had looked at future demand in the study area um, and basically uh, developed growth rates to increase the number of vehicles um, that we expect 
expect or predict to be driving in the study area um, in 2040, so a little bit under 20 years from now. And so after projecting that future demand, um, we again revisited, all right, what does that look like in terms of delay um, for people who are driving in the study area, which, which intersections are, again, similar to safety intersections causing problems. Um, so while well, so all of the same intersections from the existing conditions are experiencing um, moderate to high delay during rush hour times, there are some new intersections that popped up as well. Um, so again, this map is showing evening rush hour in 2040. Um, and again, we're seeing some of the same high volume corridors um, popping up as um, having moderate to high delay in the future. So again, these are primarily located on West Broad Street, Staples Mill Road, Gaskins Road, Dumbarton Road, and Glenside Drive. All right. And so after our review of existing conditions in the study area, existing and future no-build conditions in the study area, we worked with the agency stakeholders to develop a study vision for the Staples, for Staples Mill Road in particular, um, and this vision will also sort of drive the recommendations of the broader small area plan. The study vision for this project is for Staples Mill Road to become a complete street that supports development and provides safe and comfortable travel for all uses and users of the roadway. And again, a complete street is one that provides access um, in a safe manner for all modes. So for people walking, biking, driving, and taking transit. And this graphic also, um, again, shows a train because we're also trying to support development associated with um, the TOD concept for the Staples Mill Road Amtrak station. The study vision is also supported by five study goals and objectives. And so, you know, aside from developing the goals and objectives just to have them, we've also developed them to be able to sort of um, rank and compare the transportation alternatives that we will develop in the next stages of the project. So we will develop alternatives after this meeting, and then we will compare these alternatives by seeing how well they meet the goals and objectives that we have established for the study. And so I'll, I'll walk through these goals and objectives here. Um, we'll also be, there's a copy of this presentation on the study website, um, so you can access, um, again, the goals and objectives by logging onto the study website and, um, or, and downloading the PowerPoint presentation. Um, the first study goal is to improve safety and comfort for all users. And we're going to do that in a couple of ways. Um, the first is to try to reduce and manage um, the number of possible conflict points between um, different users. So particularly between people in motorized vehicles and then people walking or biking. We're also looking to manage and encourage a reduction in vehicular travel speeds. Um, so while we already have high speed roads, um, people, um, we want to sort of manage these speeds to ensure that people who are driving on those roads aren't going even faster you know, than, than those high-speed roads are, are set for today. Um, we're also looking at providing continuous and separated bicycle and pedestrian facilities as an objective. And there's an emphasis on separated because, um, again, as I noted previously, the high-speed, high-volume roads that characterize the study area um, are not appropriate um, or safe sort of for bringing uh, you know, bicyclists into the same space. And then we're also looking at providing protected pedestrian crossing opportunities. So again, looking back at those intersections where, while well, legally a pedestrian can cross, there, there are no marked crosswalks today. The second study goal is to manage congestion. Um, so by increasing throughput capacity, so the number of people who can travel through the study area efficiently and effectively, by reducing travel time variability so that we have fewer um, moments of, oh, I should have left earlier um, while waiting at intersections, and also to make efficient use of the existing right-of-way, again, for all roadway users. Our next study goal, 
closely related to um, goals of the TOD concept for the Staples Mill Road Amtrak station is to support economic development. So a couple of the objectives uh, related to those goals include providing access to jobs for users with a range of abilities. Um, also providing mode choice and access to employment opportunities. Um, so again, thinking back to, we have a relatively low proportion of people who are walking, biking, or taking transit to work in the study area. And it's possible that more people would do so if they had more, more choice. Um, that third objective, again, is to support implementation of the TOD concept plan for the Staples Mill Road Amtrak station. Related to that, to accommodate a higher intensity of development, particularly in um, the area around the Staples Mill Road station. Our fourth goal is to foster community and environmental health. Firstly, through encouraging mode shift, again, by providing facilities for people to bike and walk on, um, and not just to provide facilities, but to provide facilities that connect to existing and future generators. So again, thinking of the map showing the schools, the hospitals, the parks, all located on high stress facilities, providing a way for people to get to those facilities. We'll also encourage mode shift by providing ADA accessible transit stops and prioritizing multimodal investments to and near fixed and low income housing developments. Then our fifth and final goal is for the recommendations of the Staples Mill Road Small Area Plan to reflect community character. And we will do this by developing transportation alternatives that are based on your input um, and the input of other community members uh, provided through responses to surveys, um, feedback during meetings like this, um, and you know, communication with um, the study team. We'll also do this by soliciting your feedback on specific transportation alternatives. So our next public meeting um, will involve us presenting options to the public to provide specific feedback on. It will be presented during a public meeting and through a survey so that people will have the opportunity to provide feedback on the alternatives um, that really reflect um, the community needs and character. All right, as a reminder for next steps, um, as we wrap up this public meeting, um, we'll be getting into developing uh, alternatives for the project. Um, after developing those alternatives, we will share them with you, um, solicit your feedback, and um, as well as the feedback of the agency stakeholders and revise those alternatives. Um, finally, um, again, based on feedback, we will develop a series of recommended improvements that will be detailed in a small area plan report um, that will um, you know, be made available at the end of the study. And so next steps um, include, it's not a bullet here, but first is to provide your feedback during the next 30 minutes of this presentation. Um, we also encourage you to visit and share the study website. Um, the hyperlink is included here. Also, if you just Google Staples Mill Road Small Area Plan, it should be the first link that comes up. Many of you have hopefully already taken our MetroQuest survey that has been out for a couple of months now, um, which provides you with an opportunity to let us know if we've missed any particular transportation opportunities or challenges. Um, the survey will close uh, next Friday into Saturday morning, so there's one more week to take it, um, and these QR codes can be used to access it. There's also a link uh, to the survey on the study website. And then finally, we'll be coming back to you this summer for that second public meeting. And in the meantime, we will be posting study documents, um, including meeting minutes from meetings with agency stakeholders, um, a full existing conditions report, um, and a summary of uh, the public feedback that we receive during this meeting and through the first survey on the study website. And with that, we're going to move on to the question and answer section of tonight's meeting. Um, so Caitlin has been reviewing all of your questions and comments um, and we'll share them with the group. Um, we'll leave this slide up with a couple of, um, you know, additional questions uh, to think about during the section, as well as a reminder of the study area um, and study goals. And with that, I will pass it on to Caitlin to, um, to kick us off with some questions.
Yeah, Meredith, we have not actually received any questions yet. Um, I would just encourage everyone on this call to either use the chat or I don't know if you're comfortable speaking and want to just ask a question out loud. Is that an option, Meredith? Yes, that is definitely an option. So I'm seeing a couple of questions actually on my oh, end. Oh, are you? Okay. Let's see. So I can, let's see, pop those out or attempt to pop those out there. Very small. One second. There we go. All right. So, whoop, there we go. All right. So, yeah, I've got a few. Caitlin, can you see them yet? Or if not, I can go ahead and start. Um, I can't, but I'm looking for them. All right. I'll Caitlin see. Schaefer can't see them either. I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll go ahead and, and get started reading out some of these questions. And um, okay. Nicole, Rob, and Chris um, are also going to be on board to, um, to answer some of these questions. So I'll let them pull up their cameras. All right, so I think I've got a question. This one may be for Nicole and Rob. This is from Heather Grand asking if a shuttle to the proposed arena going in at Parm and I-95 will be offered in the TOD concept. And after reading that, that may, that may be a question for Henrico County, actually. Yeah. And Nicole, you may need to unmute. Yes, Meredith, that may, might be a question for Henrico County, unless um, Rob has some insight to that. I don't, but we can certainly um, find out. All right. Let's see. The next two comments are from Mitchell. Um, and he, these are more observations. So he's sharing that he frequently sees worn dirt paths in many locations and wants to note that those weren't reflected in the photos shown in this slide. Um, so that's helpful. Um, typically, those, those dirt paths indicate a desire line, right, that people want to be walking there um, and the sidewalk would maybe be appropriate in those locations. Mitchell's next comment is that lighting at Hungry Road and Staples Mill Road um, it, there's a big opportunity um, to improve lighting um, to make it easier uh, for people walking on Samples Mill Road at night to see and to be seen by people driving. Heather agrees. All right. Ann McMillan would like to know how many people are participating on the webinar tonight. I can report that we have 46 people who are currently attending the webinar. We may have had some more log on and off and we have over 1,000 responses to the MetroQuest survey. We're going to um, review all of the responses received on that survey, summarize them in charts and in a memorandum, and share um, the results of the survey on the study website um, in early um, 2022, so probably later in February. So you'll have an opportunity to see broader feedback as well. Um, and that follow-up question, that Anne asked is, is there evidence that people want to walk or bike to the Amtrak station? And again, um, that is um, not an exact survey question, but we will be able to get at that question through looking at survey responses. Okay. All right, this may be a question for Robin Nicole, again from Mitchell. Um, is there any plan or consideration given to making an overpass or underpass where Hungary Road crosses the CSX Railroad? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, yeah, at the, at the present, I really don't think uh, I don't think there's been any um, discussions about that. Um, but it is uh, um, uh, definitely something uh, that we can look at as part of this. Um, you know, as part of the study, whether that would uh, provide greater functionality for the area. So, but uh, but at the present time, there's there is no there are no plans for that. Ready? Thank you, Rob. 
Alrighty, Linda has a question um, that again um, links back to um, the the TOD concept for the Staples Mill Road Station. She asks if um, that TOD area will encourage businesses that will accommodate the needs of not only the community but also travelers to Richmond. Um, and then she provides um, some helpful information about existing land uses uh, located along Staples Mill Road today. Um, and again, the, the TOD concept, I can't speak to specifics, but does uh, recommend in, encouraging a mix of uses. Um, so again, residential, commercial, um, entertainment, et cetera. Um, so there would be a more, a more diverse uh, combination of land use types than you're seeing um, even today um, on Staples Mill Road near the station. All right. Let's see, Susan Park asks if this study will be providing recommendations on development or only transit. Um, I can answer that question. So the Staples Mill Road Small Area Plan specifically um, provides recommendations, will specifically provide transportation recommendations. Um, so what changes can we make to streets in the study area to um, improve conditions for people, again, traveling by all modes, but also to respond to um, sort of future land use changes that we know are, are coming down the pike. All right. Renee asks, how does future high-speed rail impact this study? I may pass that over to VDOT to see if anybody has any, any thoughts on that. Well, I can take a shot at that one. Um, well, I mean, future high-speed rail would be bringing more passengers to the area. Um, so as a result of that, it would be more trips to the station and the Staples Mill corridor and surrounding roadways. So um, what this study will be looking at is how do we address um, the growth uh, of traffic on these area roadways while still uh, serving the needs of, of the area and the station um, in that respect and, and trying to balance the, uh, the, the functionality of all the different users that you had mentioned earlier in the presentation um, in and around the station um, as th those uses increase and, and traffic volumes and, and um, users of the area increase. So it'll be, it'll be part of that future year analysis. Thank you, Rob. Right. Brandon asks, is there a funding plan in place or is it too early for that? Um, and so at least for uh, the recommendations of this small area plan, um, there won't be sort of one common funding plan in place for all of the recommendations of the study, um, but the alternatives that we do develop um, could be eligible for funding through VDOT programs such as um, the Smart Scale um, funding program. So again, no funding plan in place, but we will be considering that as we, um, you know, develop the alternatives in the second phase of the project or in the next step of the project. Yep, Meredith, and this is Chris Teasler. Uh, just to add to that, I think um, the, there are going to be additional funding opportunities. Um, you know, the county has funding opportunities, there's grant programs, and I think really the the infrastructure bill that was passed at the federal level recently, which does have a strong focus on, on rail, uh, commuter rail and high-speed rail along this corridor and other corridors, um, naturally potentially lends itself to providing funding opportunities for roadways that are immediately adjacent to stations such as this Amtrak station and combined with the TOD plan and the redevelopment of that over time, I think we are going to create um, some different funding mechanisms. You know, smart scale would certainly be one and one that focuses on transportation, safety and congestion. Um, but I think, you know, there's definitely going to be more. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. All right. Christy asks if, um, or she notes that this may be out of scope of this project, but she asks if bus service will come back to go downtown. 
Um, so, Christy, you are correct. We're not making any uh, specific um, sort of GRTC service recommendations, um, but um, it, it sounds like the bus service may have been slowed slowed down related to decreases in ridership in in 2020 and 2021. And so, I think that will you know that will be a, a question moving forward, um, but not one for for this particular planning project. All right. All right, last track. Okay, I apologize if I mispronounce your name, um, but Champ Burnley asks if there's any consideration to use a rail, co rail corridor for a rail with trail facility to connect Staples Mill Station to downtown and Main Street Station. I can give that a whirl unless anybody else wants to jump in. All right, so um, that's a great suggestion um, and an interesting one. Um, at this point, um, we're currently focusing on um, Staples Mill Road as that parallel facility um, you know, along um, the rail corridor, you know, to connect people who are trying to get to and from the Amtrak station to downtown via, via Staples Mill Road. So, um, you know, primarily focused on what are the opportunities within the existing cross section on Staples Mill Road, which is again that close parallel route um, for getting for getting people um, on foot and on bike um, between the study area and downtown. But it's a it's a neat suggestion. So thank you for making it. Dan wants to know if there are any plans for specific improvements to the Staples Mill Amtrak station. I can confirm that the TOD concept does include um, recommendations for specific improvements to the Staples Mill Amtrak station, um, but I cannot speak to those specifics myself. However, I can answer Beth's question. Um, which is uh, in regard to plans for the Staples Mill station, she'd like to know if uh, the location will stay the same. And yes, we can confirm that the approximate location of the station today would stay the same. Grady asks if we have considered using bus service to connect the Staples Mill Amtrak station to key destinations like Scott's Edition. Um, again, this study is more focused on um, physical infrastructure improvements as opposed to service improvements to transit um, but it's a good question and uh, we'll be able to, to share it with our agency stakeholders GRTC All right. Anne asks why not emphasize buses to Amtrak from park and ride lots incentivized with employer subsidies tax credits, et cetera. Um, and Anne is referring to something we like to call transportation demand management. Um, so we're working with individuals who own um, businesses, um, places of employment to uh, incentivize travel uh, by a mode other than um, a single occupancy vehicle. Um, and that's a good suggestion. And again, one um, that we'll share with our agency stakeholders um, and Rico County and DRPT, um, that's more specific to the work that they're doing around the TOD concept. John asks, what is the process for integrating the plan with connecting areas? Um, and so, um, yes, while we do have a rather large study area, it does have to come to an end eventually, and the roads do continue beyond it. Um, so, um, as part of our existing conditions analysis, we did, you know, take a look a little bit beyond the study area to see if, for example, for bicycle facilities, if there are any potential connecting facilities that we should be aware of. Um, and as we do sort of work on developing cross-section and um, intersection alternatives, we will, of course, be considering what happens sort of at, at the end of those proposed improvements. So um, our recommendations in the small area plan will consider sort of transitions of um, sort of a sp specific um, sections um, once we get to the end of the study area. 
All right. Sherry asks, what is the timeline to begin making improvements for more modes of transportation in the study area? I can speak to the fact that this is a planning study, so at least for um, the recommendations that come out of um, you know, the Staples One Road Small Area Plan, there, there will be some time um, you know, for those projects uh, to be programmed, for, for funding to be found for those projects before they can be implemented. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, VDOT and Henrico County are already working on um, sort of ongoing improvements for people walking and biking in the study area. So again, I had referenced some um, pedestrian improvements at intersections on Staples Mill Road, and Henrico County is looking at multimodal improvements um, on Dumbarton Road and Dickens Road. So while some of the improvements from our plan are a little further out in the calendar, there are ongoing um, projects underway and we'll be taking them into consideration as we develop our own recommendations. see. Okay. Gregory asks if there are any incentives for businesses to improve the shopping centers near the train station. Um, this is maybe a question again for Henrico County and DRPT um, in association with their TOD concept and related work. And again, I think we have some of these agency stakeholders attending this evening, but we'll also be able to share all of your comments and questions with them um, following the presentation. Jen asks, are there any plans to extend the Pulse bus beyond Willow Lawn, are there west on Broad or northwest on Staples Mill? I, and I, if, Somebody, if Nicole or Rob wants to jump in, um, this may be a question for GRTC, um, but if you all have any intel on this, feel free to jump in. Okay. Yeah, Jen, this is, yeah, it's a, a question um, that we can look into um, and look into it for GRTC. I know for sure that if Pulse is extended, it would not be on Staples Mill Road. It would it would be on Broad Street. Um, but that um, one of our you know as we're looking at long term cross section options for um, Staples Mill Road, our agency stakeholders are interested in looking at if in a very long term scenario there would be an option to make space for dedicated transit. All right. Susan asks, how are you connecting with neighboring stakeholders and existing transit plans? Um, so thinking about connecting with stakeholders, um, we have established an email list of um, community-based organizations who um, we've been, you know, we've been building on that list to reach out, to advertise the survey, um, to advertise this meeting, and we will continue to do that um, in terms of communicating with community stakeholders. Um, as far as existing transportation plans, our agency stakeholders have been really helpful in informing us about sort of planned projects um, that we should be aware of as we're developing our own alternatives. Brian asks if we're looking at high, de high demand destinations like Lewis Ginter Botanical Garden for pedestrian, bike, and public transportation access. The Botanical Garden is, is on our list as sort of a key destination. So, um, we will, yes, we are keeping those key neighborhood destinations in mind. Stephanie wants to share um, that when trains come through, um, let's see, on Old Staples Mill Road, uh, that can lead to backups at the intersection of Staples Mill Road and um, Old Staples Mill Road. And I'll have I'll have to, that intersection is one of our study intersections, Stephanie. So we have looked at it um, in our analysis, um, and we may be developing more specific recommendations for that intersection in particular in the next uh, phases of the project. All right. Michael asks if there's been consideration of adding a GRTC stop at the Amtrak station. 
um, or whether or not the area will be developed as a multimodal transportation center. Um, again, this is, um, we'll have to go back and double check um, on the specifics of that, Michael, but yes, the TOD concept is looking at recommendations to, to make sure that there is more close integration between people who are arriving at the station um, via train and then who may want to get on a bus um, to go to other destinations. Meredith, uh, this yeah. is Nicole. I, if I may add something to that, and we are getting a lot of questions about um, transit-specific, um, you know, GRTC, the pulse, um, et cetera. Um, I know that the, that GRTC uh, was working with a consultant last year on on a regional public transportation plan. Um, that draft plan is on the GRTC website um, for everyone to, to see. Um, the, the FY 2023 plan uh, is coming out soon, so it has not been finalized. Um, they're still working on this plan. Um, but like I said, they, they were working on it um, all of 2021 um, to, to develop this with a consultant. So uh, for more information on what they're exactly planning to do, um, it is in the Regional Public Transportation Plan by GRTC. Thank you, Nicole. All right. So let's see, these are a couple of observations. Um, Brandon agrees with some comments made earlier about an opportunity to improve uh, lighting on Staples Mill Road so that it's easier for people to see and be seen, um, whether they're driving, walking, biking. Um, Joel and Dan both note that they would like to be able to walk or bike to the Amtrak station. Michael asks if it is still possible to receive the MetroQuest survey. Um, yes, the survey is open and um, will remain open for another um, full week. You can um, access the survey on the study website. So if you search for Staples Mall Road Small Area Plan, the VDOT website will pop up and there's a big button um, on the page where uh, you can pull up the MetroQuest survey. Um, let's see. Let's see. Michael Porter references Impala Drive between Dumbarton Road and Hilliard Road um, as a source of potential conflict between traffic and pedestrians slash cyclists. He asks if it was reviewed. Um, so at least from a crash data perspective, we did look at all streets within the study area, um, again, to identify intersections and segments with high frequency and severity of crashes. Um, to my knowledge, Impala Drive did not pop up, but we will go back and review that. Um, and again, we looked at the crash data, um, so it could be, um, you know, that there have been, Michael, you may have experience with things like near like near misses, um, you know, between people driving and, and walking that, that aren't reflected in the, that data that we looked at. Um, all right, let's see. Oops. All right, we have seven minutes left, so we may not be able to get to everybody's questions, but we have time for a few more. So Michael wants to know if we can expand on related safety improvements at Staples Mill Road, and the intersection of Dumbarton Road and Dickens Road. He notes, um, just that this is a high conflict intersection. Um, we are, again, so we have not developed any safety improvements yet um, for that particular intersection, um, but um, I believe that's one of the intersections that did pop up. So if we do um, end up developing specific concepts on specific safety improvements, they will be shared with you all uh, this um, spring through the, um, a new survey and public meeting. John? And Meredith, if I, if, I, if I could add to that last answer, um, those were also included in a uh, previous uh, STAR study, which is strategically targeted affordable roadway solutions. Um, uh, that was that uh, VDOT worked with, um, with Henrico County on, 
And there were uh, several recommendations throughout that corridor to improve operations and safety, um, specifically at those intersections. So I believe that's also available on the VDOT website. Okay. So let's see. We have this again, name, pronunciation. I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Peggy asks um, or notes uh, that the railroad crossing of Hermitage um, Road just off of Staples Mill Road is really rough for motorists. Um, I just wanted, wanted to share that feedback. Um, Beth asks if there are any plans to collect the state to connect, excuse me, the Staples Mill small area with the nearby Innsbruck area, uh, especially since that is tradition transitioning to more mixed use. Um, I believe Nicole, you got a sim you have received a similar question earlier this week, right? Maybe not. No, I'm imagining. Yep, I don't recall. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so at least Beth in, in the near term, so we're, we're not, again, while we're not going to be looking at making changes to um, or recommending alternatives for streets and intersections outside of the small area, um, for uh, locations where we're at the edge of the study area, where we do make recommendations, we will be thinking about what that transition would look like. Let's see. See, John um, asks that uh, consideration be given to adding a protected bike lane um, to Hilliard and Lakeside. Hold on, to Lakeside Avenue between Richmond and up to Lewis Ginter. Um, and then he provides. Okay, a correction. We'll take a closer look at that. Michael asks, why doesn't the study area include the interstate ramps connecting Staples Mill Road and I-64? I think a study has already been completed, which maybe I'll let VDOT speak to. Yes, we, um, we actually have several um, studies that have been recently completed and others, there, there's one or two still in the works um, that are specifically looking at those interchange ramps along 64 with um, Staples Mills, Glenside, uh, Broad Street, um, and, uh, and and Param and, and points further west. But uh, yes, there are specific studies to address those specific needs. And um, actually, there's a, a um, couple of projects just kicking off that are based on those studies, where the design of improvements um, is just getting uh, getting underway. All right. See, okay, two minutes left. So Linda uh, notes, shares that uh, she's excited about the plan to improve pedestrian and bicycle amenities. Um, she lives on Pennock at Staples Mill Road and is terrified to attempt to ride her bikes or even walk on Pennock. See. And, okay. We have a lot of thank yous and probably with that um, we will wrap up. Um, I apologize if we did not have time to get to all of your questions um, uh, but suffice to say we will um, have a record of all of them, your questions and feedback and we'll be incorporating those into our um, summary memorandum of sort of this first round of stakeholder engagement. Um, we'll look through for, for clear clear themes um, and specific suggestions to make sure that's included um, in our summary document. Um, and uh, with that, again, thank you all for taking a full hour out of a weekday evening to um, attend this meeting. Um, please stay tuned for, for future updates and opportunities to engage uh, via the project website.